Now, before we start checklist, battery investor on. Okay, so now we get this thing up and running. Let's go battery on. Okay, got all kinds of neat stuff. <laughs> all kinetics there. Okay, that was the master caution, and or actually master like a warning, and this is the kind of like the master caution light up here. So I've got now some stuff up on my caution and warning panel. Okay, sure, I'll take that, I'll take that as is. And this is where getting into the manual and doing some uh, some translation is going to help me out a little bit. But that's normal. So battery voltage is check. Minimum of 23 volts. Now I have a voltmeter up here. Okay, my minimum is 23. I'm just a touch above 24 at this point. So got good voltage coming off of the battery. That's just fine. Okay, GPU on. Minimum voltage 28 volts. So let me see if I can remember how to start the GPU. I think I had it mapped in my case to uh, left shift, uh, right shift, slash. Okay, and you can map that using uh, to anything you want. You just go to your control settings. Okay, and there's the GPU. I've been running out here. Okay, it doesn't have any sounds as you uh, as we uh, come to the external view. But okay, this is going to apply uh, DC power to the aircraft right there. You can see where it plugs in right there below the the wing root and all the controls are right there on the panel okay so yeah very cool I've got all the lights on everything is that's why I went through all the trouble to set the cockpit up I did miss one thing there I misinterpreted the landing light switch I've got the lights on let me figure this out real quick landing lights let's see what the center position does okay center position they're still on but they're dim I think I just had it reversed okay up is landing lights off or I should say landing lights off and retracted which is what I want in this case okay that's good to go I'll take that okay so got it okay now back to the checklist uh, okay 28 volts is what I was looking for right there I'm still at 24 I wonder hmm that's okay I'm not going to worry about that I'm sure it'll work just fine I would have just expected more voltage to be coming off the generator and sometimes generators can be a little bit fluky and they'll they'll actually kick out a higher lower, lower voltage than they should or be set to a higher or lower frequency than they should and that can cause problems in the aircraft but I think it'll work just fine in either case but okay pressing on battery isolation switches check in the battery position okay battery isolation switches are right here I want these all for on I'm going to assume that by that it means the bat means that they're on. It says check bat. Then again, I think that they do need to be isolated for the startup. Let me... Hmm. Okay, I think I just figured it out. Let me, let me undo what I just did there. And I'll just kind of start the, uh, I'll just start the before start checklist from scratch. Okay, battery master on. Okay, so I've got the battery power applied. And we're right back to here with the caution and warning advisories. Okay, got that. Now it said battery voltage is check, and GPU on. Okay, I started the GPU, but to get power from the GPU onto the buses, I need to depress this button. And now I have power <laughs> coming off the GPU. Okay, that makes a lot more sense, because what confused me there was when I isolated the batteries that I lost power. That means that the GPU ground power unit was not providing power to the aircraft, so that, that's a mystery solved. Okay, so I have to press that to get power onto the buses from the GPU. Got it. Okay, now, DC bus tie on. Okay, this is the Union Barra switch. I need to go on. Okay, I've got some more advisories, and what that does is it... Uh, I, I might just bring up a schematic here, but uh, what that does is it ties in the secondary and the primary DC bus, uh, ties them together so that by going on, it's going to apply power to all the systems. I could use this to isolate certain parts of the, uh, the DC direct current system on the aircraft, but I'm going to leave it on, and I'm going to go AC inverter to standby. Okay, when it says AC inverter to standby, I'm going to assume that means to the normal position. Okay, now I've got the AC inverters kicked in. That's going to apply AC power to the systems that run off of the 
AC bus, which would be, as you can tell, the uh, the Taurus and Gyro system and all that stuff. And I can tell at a glance down here, if I look at my circuit breaker panel, I can tell what system is working off of one bus. So I have DC power coming off the generator. I have the bus tie on. So that means that I'm going to have power right now on my primary and secondary DC system. So all of these systems tied into this breaker uh, row, this breaker row, this breaker row, and this breaker row were working off of the DC system. When I turned the inverter on, now I have the 115 volt AC row powered as well as the 26 volt AC row powered. And I believe somewhere in there I got the essential bus for the 28 volts up and running too. So that's a good config right now. With the exception of the batteries being isolated right now, that's a very good config on the uh, the power system. I believe I have power on everything at everything there is. And yeah, I've got the essential DC bus powered right now because this is in the on position. So that just makes it real, real easy. Like say for example, if um, Say I have a problem on something that's on the uh, secondary 28 volt bus or you know I, I'm having a problem with a generator and I just can't get enough power output. I can isolate this bus so that the stuff on the primary 28 volt system works or I could go as far as isolating it so that I only have the 28 volt essential bus up and running. So it just gives you a lot of options when it comes to uh, in emergency situations and malfunction situations it allows you to isolate certain parts of the system but we'll, we'll look at more detail of this at some point. That, uh, it's the kind of detail that I love on aircraft because it's uh, what I used to troubleshoot and really have to know on aircraft. Okay, now uh, let's go to intercom check operation. So I would just do a quick voice check with the crew chief in the back seater. Good to go. Seat adjust, pedal adjust, ignition lamp test. So I need to test the ignition lamp. Okay, that's right down here. I just push it, light on. Good to go. Engine computer on. That's going to be up here. I've got the computer switch. Okay, that's okay. Off illuminated. If it's on, it's not illuminated. So that's okay. That that works. It's kind of different from this one. If this one's all illuminated, it means it's on. If this one's illuminated, it means it's, means it's off. That is going to confuse me to no end. But okay, that's good to go. Fuel quantity indicator test. Now, fuel quantity indicator is right down here. Okay, yep, push to test. I'm not sure exactly what the exact test is supposed to be, but I push it, it goes up all the way, and then it comes back down to the total fuel, and I will take that as a good test. Okay, now I've got, uh, let's see, fuel transfer pumps, test and set to the auto position. Okay, these are the fuel transfer pumps. How would I test these? If I were going to test a pump... Hmm, okay, at the very least... I'll put them to the auto position. Maybe that's... Uh, I don't know how you would test these. This is where I would need to really dig into the... to the manual... and figure out what the actual test procedure there is. But okay, they're in the auto position which is where they need to be. I'll take that as good for now. Fuel quantity selector fuselage. So, fuel quantity selector, center wing, fuselage, and engine fuel valve. Hmm. Okay, that's confused me. Okay, so this one is the fuselage tank pump which is off for now, that's I believe where it started. Okay, and this is center wing quantity, okay, it's labeled fuselage, or FUS, I'll take that to be the desired outcome there, and it's showing me that tank's quantity. Okay, I'll take that for now. I need to do some more reading on the fuel system, apparently. Okay, fuselage tank pump on, so I need to go Okay, right now off is illuminated, so I need to depress it one more time. That's light off, so that tank, that pump is on. Okay, yeah, that's going to confuse me, I'm sure, but that's good. Fuel valve open, so fuel valve. Okay, engine fuel valve open, depress it, it is open. Okay, got it. Stall warning system test. Perform the test and leave it on, so... 
You are the test switch. I put it in the primary position. I've got... Hmm. What would happen there? That is what I was expecting to happen there. Okay, so that's a good test. It gives me the, the tone and the caution light. That was in the top position. If I go to the bottom position, I've got the light. I might get the tone or the advisory, the... Uh, whatchamacallit here in a second. But, yeah, I think that's how I would test it if I were going to test it. I'll just put it to off for now and leave the uh, master switch on for the the uh, system. Okay, that's good. Fuel flow meter, test. Now, fuel flow meter is going to be over here on the main panel somewhere. It might take me a bit to find this. Um, or not. There's my fuel flow, flow meter right there. Okay, so it's pounds per hour times 100. Okay, here is a push to test. So I'm pushing and holding, it goes up to 1200. I have this uh, this gauge counting up. I'm not sure exactly what I'm supposed to be looking for there, but it does seem to be working. I'll take that as a good test. Hmm, okay, I'll, I'll re is this a reset switch? Yes, it is. Okay, now, that's, uh, that's fine. Okay, fire system test. Now, this is fuego, I know that word. Um, push to test. I think that's all that it is. I just push that and make sure that I get the okay, I get the main caution light and I get the or I should say warning light and I get the uh, warning light on my caution warning panel and I get the tone. Okay, good test. Voltmeter check minimum 28 volts, max 30. And yeah, like I was pointing out before, it was still at 24 volts off the battery. I have the GPU on. It's at 28 volts, max of 30, so everything is good to go on my voltage. And I am down to calls panel, check brightness, test and norm. So I've got it in the bright position. Okay, that's the dim position. And let me do a test on it. I think I go up. Okay, all lights on, good advisory. We go switch off. Okay, and then just down to the normal lights. Main lights are off. I'll take that as good. AC inverter to the primary position. So my AC inver inverter is... Yep, it's up in the primary position. I might have jumped the gun on this one. I think now, in retrospect, where it's said to leave it in the standby position, that meant to, meant to leave it off. And now I would go to the norm position, and that would get all the AC instruments up and running. I don't think it hurt anything to do it in that order, but that's the, uh, the order that's called out in the procedure anyway. Oxygen mask. Dawn. Check and secure. Got it. And startup clearance obtained. Now this is another little uh, little thing about the aircraft. The communication system isn't, uh, as far as I can tell, and I'll check it again. Yeah, the com communication system just isn't working at all, which is no big deal. Uh, so we'll press on and uh, go through the startup.